Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. And, and again, I appreciate the, the, the invite. Um, it's, 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 and I, I, I hope that, um, that my talk and, you know, my story will, in, you know, leave an impression um, on, 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 on all of you. So, so, so yeah, so we're going to talk about building your mathematical community. I might do a few deviations. I was given the blessing to do so. So um, we will have fun and see where this, see where this talk goes. So um, let's just give a, a, a brief outline. And again, I'm not that organized of a person, but this is my plan. Um, so I, 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 I first just want to start out with who I am. Um, I want to talk about some of my early struggles, um, uh, then about uh, how my community um, helped in uh, different aspects of my journey. So basically, that's the part that is in the title. I haven't, I, I hadn't talked about that, but I'll talk about the, that point. Then I want to uh, encourage all of you to do this thing that I call make your own seat at the table um, and then talk about the importance of becoming a mentor um, to those that's behind you. Okay. So first, who am I, right? So I am Zarate Woods. Um, I am still getting used to people calling me doctor. Uh, it's been two years, so I did my undergrad degree at Morehouse College. Um, I, um, I actually started in 2006, but I didn't graduate until 2014. Um, that's a part of some of the talk that I'll give in a minute. Um, but then I went on to uh, the University of Georgia to get a master's degree and a PhD in mathematics as well. I uh, put these words in, these, in this picture up here to, to kind of, to kind of, um, to kind of drive home to the fact that we all have a lot of, of different, um, a different, um, you know, identities, and, and, and we all come from different, you know, so walks of life, and we all think that things are are, are, are important and and, and and different things and stuff like that. And so, you know, I, I kind of highlighted the fact that I'm a black man. You know. I've, feel like that that is always you know my first my first um I did entity um and you know I don't even know if 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 it's if it's the, the uh, my first I I did an entity per se by choice I'm, I'm glad to be a, a black man but that is what I exist in the most of the time right uh so when someone when looks at me they don't see a mathematician first they see a black man and so that's how come I highlight it um, but you know, all of these things are important to me. Um, the mathematician is just one of them. Um, I am a diehard ATLian. I was born and raised in Atlanta, Georgia. Um, I am everything ATL. Um, you know, um, I am a big football fan. Um, so I had a blast at UGA when I was there because of that. And that was the only time to where everyone gave us a blessing to say, hey, go and enjoy the game because you can't get anything done at UGA when a football game is going on. So it was great. Um, you know, one of the things that I'll always, I'll also say is that I'm always changing, you know? So the stuff that, the stuff that, um, that I'm interested in today, I might not be interested in tomorrow and, and, and all that good stuff. And that's perfectly okay. Um, so, so um, yeah, so, uh, I am from Atlanta. I did my undergrad at Morehouse. I did my graduate uh, work at UGA. I went to an inner city school in, 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 um, in um, Atlanta, Georgia for all of my primary education. Um, I have a mother who didn't finish high school. Um, I have a father that I don't even know. Um, all of these things make me. Um, the people in the picture there are my brothers. Um, I love them to death. They're crazy, um, but I love them anyway. Um, so yeah, cool. So that's me. And then I want to talk about my early struggles. This is probably the part that is going that I'm going to spend the most time on, probably. Um, so I again, I, I, I started as a in the inner cities of Atlanta, Georgia, um, and I was. I, I, I was always 
you know, I was always described as a smart kid. I, I was always that. Um, I, 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 I was able to come to come into a class, not study much, and get a perfect score on the test. That was always me. Um, I wasn't the best student though, and because of the smartness that I had and and, and stuff like that in my former years, um, it, it, it kind of amplified, right? Because I I I was so you used to not having to try um, to where I, you know, tried to carry that over into, into college. Um, and so um, at some point I, 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 so, okay. So, so it was even to a point to where, uh, so I, I was applying to, so I, so, so I had teachers who, who knew that I was smart and who tried to surround themselves around me to say, Hey, your life is more than the inner city of Atlanta. You need to prepare for that, all of this good stuff. And I, I, I have a way uh, listened to them to the point to where I, I applied to college, right? It was like, you need to go to college. And so I did do that. I didn't put a lot of effort into it, um, but I did do that. Um, and I, I got into Morehouse and everyone was ecstatic, uh, ecstatic about that. I actually, wanted to go somewhere and play football first. I wanted to go to the, the University of Michigan to play football first. Um, but, you know, stuff was happening with my family and stuff like that. And everyone was like, hey, you should apply to Morehouse too. And so when I got into Morehouse, my mom was going through some things. And so she um, was like, hey, I want you to stay in Atlanta. So I stayed in Atlanta. And so I went to Morehouse. And, 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 and you know, that, that's, not a, that's not a bad story. It's one of the best decisions I ever made in my life. I would go to Morehouse a hundred times over. Um, this, it, it is the, the best place in the world that I could have ever went. But when I got there, I was smart enough, but I was not mature enough. Um, and I was not mature enough or I, and I also didn't know exactly what I wanted to do at that point. And, and, and so what I mean was, was I didn't know if I wanted to fly the straight and narrow. I didn't know if I wanted to be a school guy. I didn't know that yet. Um, the, the most of my family don't do what I do. The most of my family, um, you know, they, you know, the success in, in a, a bunch of my family is you grow up, you get a job, at some point you get old, you get a pension, you know, that, that, that kind of thing. Or the other things is, is that, you know, the honesty God truth is, is, is that a, a, a bunch of my friends and families are what we call outlaws, right? They they flew on the other side of, of, so what was right. And so, you know, because I was raised by all of that, I didn't know at that point, you know, if I wanted to do that or if I wanted to do this, right? Um, the weird thing is, is that my family and my friends knew that I was smart. And so they always discouraged me from doing, you know, the wrong thing and stuff like that. But I was always curious in it. I was like, well, you doing it, you know, how, how come I can't do it? You know what I mean? Um, so, and you know, I, I want to say that my struggles are not unique um, to, to, to me. I, I, I feel like I, I can almost bet that there is a person on this call who has a similar story um, and, and, and who could be going through something similar at this point. Um, and so I'm giving this story to say you got to keep fighting. So when I was, um, so I started in 06 and in in 2010, I had enough credits to be a sophomore. And I had enough credits to be a sophomore after four years with under a 1.0 GPA. Um, so I was doing awfully at that point. And, you know, people ask me all the time, you know, did, did I regret going to Morehouse directly after, after high school? And I don't. Um, and the, the reason is because, yes, I wasted a lot of money, I wasted a lot of time, but it wasn't a waste because at least Morehouse had me doing what I was doing half of the time and not the whole time because a, little, a lot of my friends, a, a lot of my families are still in a cell right now or still or, or, or dead or, or something like that. And so, yes, I am in a, a bunch of student debt, but that student that saved my life. And so if I had to go and do it again, I would, right? Um, so, um, so yeah, so in 2010, Morehouse politely tapped me 
um, and said, hey, you need to go home. And, you know, you need to, to go in and get yourself together. So, um, you know, that was a, that was a, a heartbreaker. Um, at that point, this guy named Brock Mayers, he took a big chance on me. Um, and he, there is a program called the, the uh, a McNair program. And he allowed me to be in that program, even though I didn't meet all of the criteria. Um, and that was my first introduction to graduate school. Um, but, you know, at some point I had to go to him and I had to say, hey, they're putting me out of school. Um, and that was, you know, a heartbreaker. I didn't want to, to, to tell him that, but I had to. The other part too is that at this point, up until this point, I was a computer science major. Um, but I always did so much better in math courses and my math professors, they cared about me, right? I feel, I feel like the other ones didn't. And as frustrating as I was to all of my math professors, they didn't give up on me. They, they pushed me. Um, and, you know, you know, I, 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 I tease all the time. Some of my old, uh, professors, I teased the one of my old professors, Dr. Yurika Wilson. She gave me my first F ever in life, right? And I thank goodness that she gave me that F. She, it was my first F. She didn't give me, you know, like, and, and you know, like in, at Morehouse, if you was in your major courses, you know, if you didn't get a C or a, it didn't count. She didn't give me a C minus. She didn't give me a D. She gave me a F. And it was a slap in the face. It was something that I wasn't used to, but it was the it was it was it was the one of the wake up calls that I needed. I also had a professor named Dr. Dwayne Cooper, who became the chair of the math department at Morehouse. And to fast forward, he became one of my biggest mentors. Um, so the year that I got put out of Morehouse, I was actually in his uh, uh, so real analysis class. And he was equally frustrated at the fact that I was, I, I had the inclinations to, to do well in this class, but I just wouldn't try. Um, and, and he would get so frustrated, but he would never stop trying to motivate me. Um, and so fast forward, you know, he, he became my, he became one of my biggest mentors, which I'll just talk about here in a minute. But um, so I get put out of my house. Um, and my stipulations are that I leave Morehouse and I go to a community college and I get some good grades and I come back and they'll reinstate me. Um, so that was my, my, my stipulations for a year. And that's not what I did. Um, long story short. And so I put this word and with exclamation points on this slide um, to, 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 to kind of prepare you for, for, you know, the next slide and stuff like that. And I went backwards and forwards about that, about if I wanted to share this part of it, but I feel like I would have did all of you a disservice to not give you the full me, right? So, and I <laughs> have a colored pass, right? Um, so, uh, not only did I not, um, you know, do what I was supposed to, I, I, I failed out of community college too. Um, but I also went and got in some legal trouble. Um, so, you know, I put this picture, actually, this picture actually on Facebook, you know, there was a challenge of a few years ago about, you know, if, if, if a cop killed me, which, which image would they put up, right? And, and so that's what this is. I couldn't, yeah. So the one of them is a picture of me giving a lecture at my house, the other one is a mocha. Um, it's just what that is, right? And, you know, whenever someone tries to give me, whenever someone tries to cast my story, you know, they always cast it as Zoraidi did this despite of. And so when you give this story, I, 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 the one request that I give you is that you don't cast it as despite of I did it. I want you to, 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 to cast it as because of, because without my past, I wouldn't be who I am, right? It, it's just, it, it's just true. So my past is my, so, so my past is what created me. The reason how come I went 
so hard and, 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 and I never quit is because every person that I have ever loved failed 500 times before they succeeded at 501st. So they had to get up 500 times from complete and utter failure to succeed that one time, right? And so um, I'm never ashamed of my past. Um, you know, the person that ever, I'm arrested me that day, I kind of think that he was believing that he was going to, you know, to ruin my life. I really want to, sh to shake his hand one day because that was the, 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 the wake up call that I needed um, to say that I can't, I can't go down that, that path. Um, and, you know, I put this picture up with the caveat that particularly people who are from um, minority backgrounds, sometimes we celebrate struggles. And that's not what this is. Your story does not have to be like mine, right? Your story shouldn't be, be like mine if you can help it, right? What I'm saying is, is that my story, I am trying to tell you that it's possible, it's not plausible, right? Is that if you can turn your situation around now, you should. Um, um, but what I'm, but on, on the other end of that is that if you have a hard story, what I'm saying is, is that you owe it to yourself and, 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 and to everyone that you love to not quit. You have to keep pushing. Um, so I, 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 I definitely give that picture with, with caveats to not say, let's, let's uh, celebrate that I was a complete knucklehead. Um, so, um, so yeah, so uh, I, I, I always tell everyone that whenever I present myself, you are seeing, you know, those, those two people are one and the same. Um, the both of those are me. And, 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 and I, I learned to become that other person through the, 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 the person that's in the mug that's experiences. So uh, if you get, if you get me, you get the both of those guys is, is what I always say. Okay. All right, moving on, right? Let's talk about, so what we came to, to talk about. And I, I had to stage it there because this right here will tell you how come community is so important to me, right? So my community saved my life, right? So I, I, I told you the beginnings, right? The beginnings of it was that I became a student that for the better or worse, worse, you probably shouldn't have edited on me. I, I, it seems like I was not the person to bet on. But so my community did bet on me. And so um, that, so uh, I, I had a friend who I was living with and he was actually going to my house as well. And um, I seen him. So, okay, no, sorry. The beginning of that is that, so as a, as a result of that mugshot, right, I had to, to do some things. I, had, I was on probation. I had to pay some things. So my mom basically, well, my mom and the judge basically was like, don't go back. And my mom said it for a particular reason. The judge said it for another. The judge said, don't come back because things will get bad if you come back. Um, and so I had to pay off some probation or whatever, whatever, right? And I was working at this um, at this lawnmower plant. And um, I was there one day and I had dropped a bunch of stickers. And the, the boss that I had at the time, he came and and <laughs> said some things to me in a way that I don't believe any human should ever say to any human. Um, he, 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 he came to me and told me that I was a disrespectful profanity, profanity. And if, and if I ever do something that I disrespectful again, I'll be out of here. I'm lucky to have a job, blah, 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 blah. blah. And in my head, so at this point, I am still a particular hothead. I am still not here to listen to that. I mean, for obvious reasons, but I was also, it was also amplified for me. Um, and so at that point, I decided I cannot be here too much longer because if I do, then some, something bad will happen. And I also went that same, that same year and I seen the one of my best friends 
graduate from Morehouse. Um, if you haven't been to a Morehouse of graduation, it's a place where you have a lot of traditions. It, it gives you a feeling that I can't describe. Um, and, 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 you know, it, it's almost like hypnotizing almost. Um, but I, I realized that I had to have that at that point. I, I really did. I realized that there's nothing about me that's that I, 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 I gotta have it. And so, um, but at this point I hadn't done anything I was supposed to do. Um, and so I went to some of the same professors that failed me the, the year before, in particular, the chair of the math department, Dwayne Cooper. Um, and I told him what happened. And I also went to Brock, as the person who was over me there, and I told him what happened. The both of them shook their head and, 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 and they still asked me to go to the admissions office and, and, and see what can happen. So I go, I go to the admissions office and um, I tell them the story and they basically like, <laughs> how can we admit you back? I mean, like you didn't do anything that you're supposed to do. And so, you know, I, I basically was like, so, you know, Dr. Cooper and Brock told me to come and they was like, well, I tell you what, if you, you can get the both of them on the phone right now, and if they can tell you you have they have complete responsibility for you, and that and that and that and, and that they will make sure that you are doing the correct thing, then I'll admit you. And so I called the both of them. Thank goodness the both of them answered the phone, and um, they both vouched for me, and 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 like I got back into my house. Um, after that, the both of them called me to their separate offices and gave me colorful explanations about how come I, I had to do it correctly this time. Um, and because of that, and also because of, you know, what I wanted to do, you know, I, I did. I, I went back and I did the correct thing this time. Like, not only did I do the correct thing, like I, I, I must say I, I snapped, I went off. Um, and so, um, I maintain at least like a three six to like a three nine, you know, my whole time. And it took me, so I was there for four years, it was all for a year, and then it took me three years to, to graduate after that. So I spent a total of eight years in undergraduate. Um, and so um I um I, you know, I went, I went off. And at that point is when my math community start to build, right? And so, so what is a math, uh, math community? And that, 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 that answer is different for everyone. Um, you know, so um, mathematical community can consist of, of, of any person that, that is needed for you to become a, 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 a mathematician. So the, one of the questions uh, that I have is, is, is your math communities all mathematicians? The answer to that, at least for me, is no. Um, you, you, you get your mentorship, you get your friends, you get your guidance from any channel that you can get it from. Um, so my math community consists of, you know, obviously the predominant um, uh, ratio is mathematicians, but they also consist of college administrators. They also consist of, of people who do a math education. They also consist of people who do psychology. They also consist of my family. Um, they also, you know, and so, you know, um, again, it, it, it is, it is the, the people in your life who make you a bit better mathematician. That's what I would say. How do you build it? Um, you know, I, I, you know, I mean, this isn't to just keep on holding on, on Morehouse, but I was fortunate to go to Morehouse because, um, you know, as a black mathematician, in particular, as a black male mathematician, the mathematicians that are at Morehouse are particularly known, and particularly Dr. Cooper is known. Um, and so, you know, the one of the, the things that he did for, for me was. Um, through everything that he did, he drug he drug me along with him, right? He 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 he. So at every uh, at every like math conference, at every at every 
Herc Shop, you know, I was his little, I was his little like protege. He, he figured out how to find me to go and, and I, I went uh, with him. So my math community was built um, a lot off of that. Um, it was built, um, it was built um, just from going to conferences and being introduced to people. And so the one, the one of the, the, the biggest pieces of advice that I would give you, you don't have to have my story to have a professor to absolutely love you, right? You don't, right? And so the one of the biggest pieces of, of, of advice is that those office hours that you don't use, um, those times that you, your professors are like, hey, I want to talk to you, go talk to them. Like, really do it. Um, learn about, about those people. They will talk to you about basically whatever you want to talk about. Um, um, they are, you know, human beings, just like all of the rest of us, and they enjoy talking about them. They enjoy talking about their work. Um, but that is my relationships with my professors is probably one of the biggest reasons I come. I got into graduate school. Um, so when I, so when it was time for me to get to graduate school, um, I didn't. Right. So I was, so I, I, I was maintaining between a three six to a three nine for three years. My grades were so bad the first four years, so I still didn't graduate with a three zero. Right? I think I graduated like a two nine or something like that. Right. And so applying to, to graduate school without even 3.0 is, is kind of funny right now, if you ask me, right? Um, and um, I also had terrible GRE scores, right? I, I wanted, so I had I took the, the GRE in math. I think I was in like the seventh percentile or something like that. It was awful. Um, but I had a lot of like research experience. So I, I, I did a lot of REUs. Um, um, I, and I, and I also had great, that is a recommendation. And that, that just came from hanging out with professors, talking to them, going through hard math problems with them, um, and, and, and building my community like that. Um, when I got to graduate school, so what you realize, uh, so when you get to graduate school is that not everyone, so I went to HBCU, right? Everyone, everyone. I went to, and I also went to an all male HBCU. So everyone who's doing math looks like me. Um, and then once I got to graduate school, I realized that I'm the weird one, right? I realized that, that there was two African American males um, 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 in the graduate program. And the only reason I come there was two is because the one of my friends came with me, right? So we were the black male population. There was two African American women, three of them, two of them got put out. Right, so a total of uh, four African Americans uh, my whole time there. Um, I still don't know of any that are there, um, and actually an another one actually got put out. So, so by the time I was graduating, it was three of us. Um, and you realize that you are in this sea of, you are a chocolate chip and a cookie, and you're just the only chocolate chip. And you know, you realize, man, I'm weird. Um, everyone who does math does not look like me. And, you know, like that, that might sound strange to some of you, but you can imagine I went to, I went to HBCU, our math department was black and male. So I thought that everyone, I was able to hang out with some of the friends that I would go and grab a beer with or something like that. I was able to hang out with them in math, right. And do math together, but that's not what happened in graduate school. Um, in graduate school, um, you know, I critique the University of Georgia all the time, but I don't want anyone to get it misconstrued in that it is the best graduate school choice that I could have made too. But I had a hard time there. And a lot of it was not just because the math was hard. A lot of it was because I looked different. Um, and so at some point I had to prove myself. At some point, someone would say, you know, I would ask, you know, can we, can we like work on homework together? And they didn't, didn't want to work with me. Um, at some point, I am walking down the hall, and I won't say his name or anything like that, but I was talking to a professor, and he, he asked me how, how, how I was doing. I told him I was fine, but, you know, I was going through some things, and he basically told me, you know, you're probably going to fail out of the school, out of the, out, of the, um, out of the program. He said, you'll probably fail out, and, um, and um, you know, that's okay. Don't, don't, don't go and hurt yourself. 
or anything like, like that. Like, don't go and commit suicide. You will um, go to another place and you will you will finish up there. That's what he told me. Um, and thank goodness my community at Morehouse and the ones outside of Morehouse that I had met outside of Morehouse all individually sat me down and told me what was going to happen. Um, they basically told me that I am going to be outcast a little bit. They told me that they're going to tell me that I don't belong. They're going to tell me, they, they told me that it was going to be hard. They told me that I was going to fail a lot. They told me that and they prepared me for that. And because of that, that talk that he gave me didn't make me fold. Um, that talk that he gave me, it actually fueled me, right? And so in my head, I kind of laughed and I kind of was thankful for his talk because in my head, I wonder if he didn't give me that talk if I would have passed or not. Um, but because he gave me that talk and because he told me that I was gonna fail, I knew I had to pass the little funky program. Like I just knew it. Like it was just like, this program cannot beat me at this point because he told me it was gonna beat me. Um, and so, um, you know, I knew that I was gonna come into Morehouse. I mean, I knew that I was gonna come into the University of Georgia and I, I, I wasn't going to know every piece of math that every other person knew. Um, I knew that. Um, what Morehouse taught me was how to work. Morehouse taught me that it is okay to be the only person in your office. It is okay to be the only person in the whole building. Um, it is okay to work for uh, 16 hours a day and only stop to eat. It, it taught me that. Um, and so there were times to where, and I wanna say for most of the first two years that I, um, you know, ate and slept math. I, I went in, I pushed 16 hours a day, almost daily, um, where everyone else was a kind of a, a eight to four person, you know, they came in and they left and I, they turned off all of their lights and my lights was the only one on. And I was comfortable with that, it's fine, yeah, it worked. Um, and so, um, so, so my uh, auto was always, you know, I, you know, you might can come in and be smarter than me, but you will not work. Um, so that was all, always my mantra. Um, and so because of the community that I built in undergrad gave me the fuel to get over the hump in graduate school. In graduate school, I also built a bunch of community. Um, so, um, and then you realize that the community that, uh, that you build, at more, I mean, in graduate school is nothing like the community that, that you build in undergrad. You realize that you don't have the same interests. You realize that you you know, were raised in different ways and you realize that you start doing stuff with people that are interesting, right? That you wouldn't ever do. I remember I was strawberry picking with some people and, you know, I, I had never even thought about something like that, but you have to be open to that kind of thing because those people are some of my best friends, some of my biggest advocates, some of my mentors even today, the one of the one of um, the one of uh, the people who got me through my qualifying exams, he was an old, you know, a old white Jewish guy um, that yeah, you know, conservative. But when we talked about math, he wanted me to do well, and it, like without him, I probably wouldn't have. He was the only person that had time. He was the only person that was like, "You show up to my office." and you want to do math, I'll do it with you. Um, so, um, you know, I build community there and that just came from, you know, um, being around, um, strugg uh, struggling together, um, but also, you know, it was, you know, I'll be honest and say it was easier to start to build that community. Once I started to prove myself, it's, it's unfortunate, but it was true. Um, but there were some, some people that were there at the beginning. I appreciate them. But so once I started passing things and stuff like that, that's when people started to come around and started to, to you know, they wanted to be cool. I wasn't ET to them anymore at that point, right? Um, and then, so as mentioned, I work at the, the, the Johns Hopkins Applied 
it's a laboratory. The interesting thing is, is that I didn't actually get that job through my network at the University of Georgia. I actually got that job through a network at Morehouse. And so, um, and so, you know, there were different sets of people who helped me along the way at every aspect of my journey. And without them, you know, I don't, I don't do what I did. Okay. So uh, this right here is a bunch of pictures um, um, of some of the people that I hold near and dear. The person, the, the one in the, in the middle at the top is, is some, some of my family, uh, my mom just beat cancer, woohoo. Um, the, on, the, on the far uh, left at the top is me standing beside uh, Dr. Cooper. That's the person that I've been raving about. On the, on the left is, um, is actually me with my advisor at graduate school. The other black guy in the, in the photo is my good friend, Jordan. He's also in the, the, the picture with uh, Dr. Cooper. So, so again, so we will, went to uh, UJ together. Um, he's also at the bottom. Um, I'm, I'm in, a, in, in my cohort of in, in my math department friends. Um, the person in the, the, the middle, the, 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 the smiling woman, her name is Shelby Wilson. She is actually the person that helped me to get my job. Actually, she, she's a, a professor. She was a professor at Morehouse. Um, the person on the other side, uh, that's all the way at the end, that's almost as large as I was at the time is Brock Mayers. He's actually now Dr. Brock Mayers. That's the other person that invested in me. You know, I was so lucky to have a community that I had because when I looked up in my dissertation defense, I see most of the people in these pictures there, right? So even the people at Morehouse, um, some of my family, some of my friends, I look up and my dissertation defense is so full, some of my community members have to stand up, right? It, it was kind of unheard of, it was a stadium style seating and I, I made some of my, my, my uh, committee stand up. It was one of the proudest things ever. It was great. Um, so um, I say that, you know, my community is strong and you know, I, I, I appreciate them for that. All right. So the other part is to make your own seat at the table. Um, and, you know, this right here is basically to switch gears to say every person on this call, um, I don't care if you're black, white, green, polka dot, we need your perspective. And you don't have to conform to give us your perspective. You don't have to be what you think you're supposed to be. You can show up as you, um, you're enough, just how you are right now. That doesn't mean don't change, right? I definitely say, you know, why and do, why would you do all of this work to, to, to stay uh, the, uh, the same? Jay Z said that, right? Um, but you don't have to conform to be who someone else believes that you're supposed to be. So, you know, I say all the time, you know, I I, I have to have you at the table because the idea that I need to to to, to help so with the world's problems. You probably hold it, but you're not at the table with me. So come, let's talk. Like, come on. Um, and you know, I, I also have to tell my, myself that every time too. I'm 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 not at all the tables too, right? But I, I feel like that the reason how comes some of the world's hardest problems are still unsolved is because the same people are 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 trying to answer the question, right? And so every, everyone in this call is needed. Your opinions are needed, and you are um, enough as you are. Okay. And then, uh, so I got three minutes left. So the reaching back part. This is actually uh, the one of the biggest um, parts of who I am. It is what makes me tick. Um, outside of, outside of, you know, I, I, I enjoy math for enjoying math, I do. But I, I also enjoy it and, and I want to bring people who wouldn't have a seat at the table in. And I want to try to be a facilitator for that. And you should too. And so you can become a, a mentor today. 
not tomorrow, not when you get your degree, you can become a mentor today. Um, and it is important to uh, do that, right? So not only do I have mentors, but I have mentees and my mentors make me better, but I promise you that my uh, mentees do too, right? And so the, one of the things that I know all the time is, is that I have to do what's right have to keep on uh, working hard because I know who's looking at me and that drives me, right? And so it is just as important to build your community of mentors, um, of people who, who can help you along the way, but it's also equally important to bring someone with you. Um, you may inspire, you know, the next generation, right? You, you may. And, you know, because of where I come from, you know, the one of the things that I sit and I think about all the time, and this is because of, you know, so my experience, right, is that if I don't do what I do, right, the one of the things that I'm terrified of is a big problem like cancer is going to stay stuck in the hood. The answer, the answer to how to cure cancer is going to stay stuck in the hood forever. And the reason is because they don't have a voice yet, right? And so so I mean that's particular for me, but so whatever, so so whatever your walks of life is, that the people who aren't there could have a voice and you got to bring them. You, you got to. Um so um I'll stop there. Um I, I, I've talked a lot. It's 345. Um and I will fill some questions. Thank you, Sarati. Um, this was fantastic, and I think you touched um, so many great points. Yeah, let's see. There are some questions from the audience. I see some raised hands. So you can unmute yourself and ask a question. OK, all right. Um, uh, great talk, uh, Dr. Woods. Uh, my name is Emotep Hogan. I go to Florida a and University. I uh, just wanted to ask real quick, so what advice would you give yourself prior to entering Morehouse? <laughs> you know, that's a, that's, a, that's a weird question because I, I don't know, right? Because I probably wouldn't have listened to it, um, to be honest with you. Um, you know, I, I would say the, the unfortunate tr tr truth about me is that I learned the, the most from up in my head. Um, I've always, I've always done that. I still do that. Um, and so, so maybe the one of the biggest pieces of advice is to just don't quit, to keep pushing, um, to say that life happens. Um, I mean, obviously I would say, hey, don't do some of the craziness that you did, but I wonder if I would have listened. I don't know. Um, but, um, but I saw, I saw, I would definitely lead with that. But as a person that I am now, I, know that I probably wouldn't have listened to it, but I still say it. Um, but the biggest thing is, is don't quit. Um, and you know, how you start isn't, isn't the most important thing is more of how you finish kind of thing. Awesome. Any other questions from the audience members? Remember, you can always also use the chat. Uh, I see Aaron. Yes, thank you for the talk, Dr. Woods. My name is Aaron Ortiz. I go to University of Texas at El Paso, UTEP. Now, um, in my department, um, I would say we're a, you know, we, we come from a Hispanic town. Um, but even in my department, I feel like it's kind of weird that we're like, I feel like I'm a minority, even in this city where it's like, we call it Mexico number two. Um, sure. would, I know you mentioned that a lot of times you felt like, you know, it was looking around and maybe not the same in some of these communities. Do you think that sort of pushed you to even want to go more like seeing that you could be, you know, a face of you know, maybe changing and encouraging other people? Or do you feel like at times that kind of, you know, push maybe even made you push back? Yeah, so the honest and goodness truth is, is that I went to get a PhD because I wanted to be 
like the person that mentored me. I, I, I wanted to be Dwayne Cooper. I, that's, that's what I wanted to be. Um, I wanted to be in that. He, he got a PhD. The other part was just that, like, you know, it was arrogance, too. It was I, I feel like I'm good at math. I feel like I should be spoke sp spoken with. Like, I, I feel like if someone brings up a topic in math, that they should be speaking my name, right? And so I wanted to, to I, it, it was also that as well. The, the, the biggest reason is because I wanted to be like him. Um, so when it comes to being different in spaces, um, it, it doesn't, I mean, I don't pull back per se, um, but I believe it's more of a, because I've just gotten used to it. Um, it's that, um, and you know, this isn't, this isn't just a, a color thing, right? This isn't just a, a race thing. This is, you know, I, I, this is if you're, if you're a woman, if you're LGBTQ, if you're, uh, non-gender conforming, if you, all of those things that'll make you a minority, you, you gotta, you gotta become comfortable with being the only one there. And weirdly enough, you know, if you, if, if you're in that space for a long enough time, it just happens. Um, but what I will say is, is that I try to make a valiant effort every day to make sure that I'm not the only one that has to get used to something, right? And so being in that space, that doesn't mean that you have to make everyone comfortable. Um, and being in that space doesn't mean that you have to look like everyone else, right? So, um, so you know, it, it wasn't, uh, it wasn't uh, the space is making me, it's just more of a like, you practice and you practice and you practice and it's just whatever, it's just, you are, you're in the space that you're in and you just get used to it, so. Thank you, Dr. Woods. Dirk, I see a hand from you. Um, okay, so hi, my name is Dirk Tolson III. I just want to say, Dr. Woods, I really appreciate your talk. Um, great speech and everything. I really appreciate it. Um, I want to talk to you because I really related more about how you were a computer science major before, and then you decided you want to do mathematics. That was like the same way too. And it didn't take, it took me until like the COVID-19 pandemic to like really like realize like I didn't want to pursue something in math, in computer science, but more in like mathematics and statistics. So I wanted to ask you, how did you, when did you realize that you felt like mathematics was more of like your thing to do and like you found your passion? Then of course, pursuing a PhD and becoming a doctor in mathematics, how did you know that you want to do that for your life? Because I always knew like with computer science, you like get the four year degree, then you just go into industry. But like, how did you realize that if that you didn't want to do that, but of course wanted to pursue sure. more? So, so, you know, the, the topic of this talk is to build your community, right? And, you know, honestly, it was just because the community that took me in the most was math. Um, you know, I was always good at math. Um, I, you know, I, I wasn't, I, I was, you know, I could, you know, when I was in high school, I could skip class all, all you know, the whole semester and come in and, and take the test and score from trial. I could do that um, and um, in, in, in high school, um, but not at my house. But, <laughs> but, um, but um, and so I was always good at it, but I didn't have an understanding that math could be a major when I went in. I was like, what do you do with math? That, that, that's weird. Um, and so, I, you know, I was always interested in computers. And so I started with computers. But, you know, this isn't any shame at the computer science department. I, I wouldn't have put so much time in me either. But I, I didn't try in the computer science department. And so that that set of professors was just like, he's just a passer through her and, you know, whatever, whatever. But and weirdly enough, uh, even though I wasn't trying, I was still doing better in my math courses than I was in my computer science courses. Um, and so um, it was a combination of the people who took me in um, that uh, they got me into math, but also, you know, I, that was the thing that I was naturally good at. The strange thing is, is that the the stuff that I do now and the stuff that I researched even in, even in, even in graduate school blurs that line a lot. I program every day. Um, I, I, I think about computer structures. I think about internal work as algorithms, all of the things that a, a computer scientist does. I do that stuff every day. I do it in a math framework, but you know, um, the, 
the line of computer science and math. So once you start to walking up to us, it blurs a lot. It's 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 kind of fuzzy. So yeah. Cool. Thank you for answering my question. I really appreciate uh, your time taking to talk to us. Thank you. For sure. Thank you. Hi, Dr. Woods. Uh, my name Hello. is Tomas. Hello. Um, I, I, I had a question about mentoring. So you mentioned you do a lot of mentoring and, and you showed us some, some photos of that. I, I'm curious, uh, it, kind of more in the specifics, do you use um, larger, larger like set up mentoring programs or do you kind of mentor on a, on a case by case basis? Do you, do you how do you find people who you want to mentor and who would be receptive to your mentorship? You know, so do I set up mass mentoring things? No, right? Am I pulled into those a lot? Yes. <laughs> so uh, the one of the, the one of the, I guess, um, good things and bad things about being, you know, the only mathematician that hundreds of people know is that whenever there's a math thing, it's, it's me, you know, they, they ask me to do it. Um, and so I am pulled into that a lot. Um, the other thing is, is that, you know, I get calls, I get texts, I get DMs on social media um, about, hey, I have this kid that hates math or that's struggling in math, so will you help them? And for some reason, I cannot say no. I just can't do it. And it, 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 it sucks all of my free time away. But that's okay. I'm, I'm gonna be okay with that because I use a lot of folks free time and so I feel like I owe that back. Um, so it's, it's kind of a combination of those two things. Thank you so much. Christopher. Towards, uh, my name is Chris Rosotto. Um, I'm currently at a, a Queens College of the City University of New York. Um, I just want to say thank you for your presentation. And, um, you know, I, I really appreciate it. Uh, uh, as a lot of people have said, a lot of comments here, too. Um, you know, one thing that kind of stuck to me a lot is um, I really appreciate that you took the time to kind of, like, talk about your, you know, your, your past and, like, how, you know, your lowest of the lows. I feel like a lot of times, uh, you know, we've seen, like, academia and stuff. Um, you know, you may see, like, for example, someone's accomplishments, but you don't, you don't see necessarily, like, the climb to get to those accomplishments. So for, you know, to take the time out and to, to kind of tell us your whole life story uh, was, you know, it meant a lot. So uh, and I was wondering, um, I guess, in terms of like, in terms of like, uh, in, for someone who wants to like pursue a, a doctoral degree in like the mathematical sciences and like similar to like, um, I, I personally face kind of like challenges similar to yours and like not necessarily coming to like a mathematical max degree, but starting off like a different major and like having uh, like uh, difficulties with that. Um, you know, how, how, how can we, uh, I guess, change like this perspective in mathematics where we, you know, don't focus, I guess, much, so much, I guess, on, on portraying our, our accomplishments, but also portraying our, our bad sides and like trying to like, I guess, uh, I, I guess trying to like, you know, portray like, um, like it, it's a climb, I guess, to get to like where, where we are and stuff like that as well too. So um, thank you so much for uh, the talk again. Yeah, yeah. so, so uh, <laughs> My story is particularly interesting, for sure. Um, and, you know, I, I, I again stress that, you know, your story doesn't have to be like mine to, 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 to push forward, right? But um, to answer your question, what needs to happen is that we need to um, start humanizing some people again, right? To start saying that everyone comes with a lot of things, right? Even stuff that you don't see. Um, to, to start saying that, you know, this student is not a grade or a student number or something like that. This is a human being that is going to come with a lot of identities, that's going to come with past, that's going to come with futures, that's going to struggle. Um, and so, you know, as a person, so I, I also, I'm also an, an, um, an instructor on the side. And one of the things that I definitely try to, to make sure that I'm doing all the time is to look at my students as human beings first. Um, and then answer their math questions. Um, and so, you know, if you if you just check yourself at that level up front, uh, uh, a lot of what you're saying, you know, will be taken care of. Gotcha. Thank you so much. I see, uh -huh. I see Lauren. 
Hi, um, just echoing everyone else. Like, thank you so much for the wonderful talk. Um, my name is Lauren Quesada. I go to Pomona College. And um, so I guess I was wondering mostly about, um, I feel like a lot of times people like minorities, uh, low income backgrounds in these spaces of academia are often seen as like a, a surprising thing, as a feat. And I'm curious, and sometimes it's more confrontational as you described it, where we're actually told that we like don't belong or probably will not belong there. And I'm just curious how you envision yourself in those spaces that other people don't. Like, how do you how do you see what other people don't that success for yourself? I didn't see it at first. I, I didn't at all. And that's the one of the biggest things about mentoring. And one of the reasons how come you should be you should be a mentor, and everybody on this call should be a mentor, because the people that seen things in me, I you know I, I didn't see those things at first, um, and. You know, I, I, I feel like that it is, it's not only a disservice to us that, 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 you know, that we're the, 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 the people that, that don't belong, but it's also a disservice to the institution too, right? Because some of the smartest people I know in this world don't have any formal degrees, right? And so they are, and so the institutions, the world, government, all of them are missing out on this information that if they gave the people who they didn't give chances to, if they actually gave them chances, um, then, then we could advance some things. Um, but, you know, to, you know, the, the, the question that you asked me is hard. So we have to change the mindset of some people um, that hold power. Um, and that's a slow process. Um, it's very, very slow. Um, and so, um, you know, that comes from trying to, you know, you know, trying trying to at least start there, trying to at least um, start to, you know, I, the other part to it is that like, so when it comes to minorities, when it comes to people who don't fit a mold, right? We have to start looking at them in not so tr 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 traditional ways. Right, is that when I'm when I'm passed a resume, right, from a person that came from you know a place that was not MIT, right, they're going to be lacking some things that the person that went to MIT is going to be lacking, right, and I have to be okay with taking a chance on that person, right, and the people who hold their power also have to be okay with taking a chance on that person, and I have had some of the best interns, I have had some of the best permanent hires through that kind of thing and you know like so when it happens it seems like that we kind of ignore it but like that's that's actually pretty normal actually that, that's not an unnormal thing that like a person who you know didn't have a chance they finally got the chance and blew it out of the water so um so yeah well thank you for that answer uh, we're heading to the end of the hour um, so we're gonna switch to the sort of casual conversation. Definitely keep asking questions, but we're gonna stop the recording now. Um, I noticed some questions in the chat, so feel free to stick around um, and keep uh, getting to know Dr. Wood. <laughs> 